Bridges comes in all shapes and sizes, and they do collapse more often than you think. They are marvelous structures, but when they fail, it is usually catastrophic. Here are 10 catastrophic bridge collapses explained. Number 1. Sunshine Skyway Bridge Collapse On May 9, 1980, a ship collided with the Sunshine Skyway Bridge located in Tampa Bay, Florida. This caused a collapse of a section of the southbound bridge. The original truss cantilever bridge was opened in 1954. Later on, a second bridge was opened in 1971 to provide two lanes for traffic in each direction. The old bridge handled northbound traffic while the new bridge handled the southbound traffic. The two bridges ramps to the cantilever section to provide a 244 meter horizontal clearance and 47 meters vertical clearance. Collisions with the bridge pier were very frequent due to the volatile weather. The main piers located closer to the ship canal had fenders to absorb the impact forces from the ships. But these fenders were not installed on the other piers. Any impact with those piers could lead to bridge failure. Despite the constant warnings of the bridge huge design flaw, there were no significant upgrades done on the structure. On the morning of May 9, 1980, a severe thunderstorm and wind pushed a 177 meter long ship outside the ship canal. The ship's radar did not operate properly. In addition, the fog and the storm made it difficult to navigate. The ship ended up hitting the main pier first, causing no damage to the bridge. But the ship kept drifting, hitting the anchor P head on, causing a collapse of big section of the southbound bridge. Six cars, one truck and a bus carrying 23 people fell into the bay, killing 35 people. The mass and design of the bridge and the lack of P protection systems and the speed of the vessel are directly related to the bridge collapse. If a P protection system had been installed at that location, it could have absorbed most of the impact force by the colliding vessel, preventing the bridge from collapsing. The failure of this bridge led to the development of bridge failure protection system standards in the US. It also led to the evaluation of the need to install bridge protection systems on existing bridges. Ships introduced tremendous momentum even when traveling at low speeds, which is why it became important to recognize the potential hazards from ship collisions and design bridge protection systems on new bridges so that the risk of collision are reduced to an acceptable level. When the new Sunshine Skyway Bridge opened in 1987, the pier foundations had large concrete islands called dolphins built around each of the bridge's piers to absorb ship impacts. Due to this failure, all bridge piers and navigatable waterways in the US must be designed to resist ship impacts, a lesson learned the hard way. Number 2. Hassanabad Bridge While bridge collapse by colliding ships is common, a bridge swept by a glacier is another story. On May 7, 2022, extreme weather conditions and temperature rise in the northern areas of Pakistan melted the Shifa Glacier, which flooded the Hansa River, wiping out the Hassanabad Bridge and damaging nearby homes, buildings and two power plants. The Hassanabad Bridge is a vital link between the northern areas of Pakistan and the rest of the country. It is also the main connection between Pakistan and China. The bridge collapse happened due to the glacial lake outburst flood, which led to a massive displacement of water and eventually led to the collapse of the Hassanabad Bridge. The bridge tragedy is not entirely unexpected, as the area was a source of many outbursts in recent years, including two in 2019. The investigation did conclude that the construction of the Hassanabad Bridge did not cause the disaster, but rather the position of the bridge exposed it to the glacial lake outburst flood. Pakistan has the highest number of glaciers outside the polar region, melting at high speed due to the climate crisis. Proper monitoring of the lake behavior and installing an early warning system can reduce the risk of flood disasters in the downstream areas. Number 3. The Silver Bridge in 1967, the Silver Bridge collapsed during rush hour, resulting in 46 fatalities. The cause of the collapse is due to a failure in one of the suspension chain links. The bridge was opened in 1928, connecting Point Pleasant, West Virginia and Gallipolis, Ohio. This is a steel suspension bridge with a total length of 681 meters and a longest span of 213 meters. 
The bridge relied on the tension of the chains that were suspended between the two towers and anchored at the end. The deck is supported by the suspended chains through vertical members also acting in tension. The bridge was constructed using the I-bar chain bridge method. The chains is formed from I-bars with holes at each end connected by a pin, which allows for a movement of the bridge in response to loads on the bridge. Such bridges are usually constructed using redundant bar links, which are rows of 4 to 6 bars, sometimes using several chains in parallel. The over design method gives the bridge a high safety factor, so in case of a failure of one I-bar, it won't lead to the bridge collapse. But the I-bars in the silver bridge offered little to no redundancy, as each chain link consisted of just two I-bars in parallel. These I-bars were made of new high strength steel, more than twice the tensile strength of other steels at that era. This meant fewer I-bars per link were needed to achieve the required strength to support the bridge, or at least, that is what the designers thought. However, with only two I-bars per link, the failure of one of them would hugely increase the loading on the other I-bar, making the failure of the suspension bridge imminent. So in 1967, after 39 years in service, the bridge failed in less than one minute, leading to the loss of 46 lives. The investigation concluded that the bridge failed due to the failure of I-bar number 330 on the Ohio end of the bridge. The bar had a crack that developed over 39 years from the stress and corrosion on the bridge. The high strength steel also had low toughness near freezing temperature, which was the condition of the weather at the morning of the collapse. This caused a brittle fracture of the I-bar during peak hours. This transferred all the loading to the other I-bar, which could not hold the weight of the bridge and led to a chain reaction that resulted in a collapse. Accident investigators found that had there been three or more I-bars per link, there would have been the possibility that the failure of one I-bar would not lead to a disaster. Also, at the time of the construction, a typical family automobile weighted 680 kg or 1500 pounds, and the maximum permitted truck weight was about 9 tons or 20,000 pounds. By contrast, at the time of the collapse, a family automobile weighted 1800 kg or 4000 pounds, and the truck limit was 27 ton or 60,000 pounds. Bumper to bumper traffic jams were also more common, occurring several times a day, five days a week, thus causing more stress on the bridge elements. Failure of bridges due to overloading is very common, especially for bridges that are designed for weight limits that does not exist today. I actually made an entire video on this, you should check it out if you want to learn more. In the case of the silver bridge, it was a combination of overweight and the fatigue failure of the bridge. In the wake of this failure, the National Bridge Inspection Standards were established, requiring every bridge to be inspected every two years. Number 4. Siangsu Bridge On October 21, 1994, a section of the Siangsu Bridge suddenly collapsed on the Han River in Seoul, the capital city of South Korea. A bus and six passenger cars that were driving on the bridge fell into the river about 20 meters below one after another. 32 people died and 17 were injured. A combination of faulty welding, rusted extension hinges and insufficient maintenance resulted in the structural failure of the bridge. The Siangsu Bridge opened in 1979 and was the 11th bridge constructed over the Han River. The cantilever bridge had four lanes of traffic and a span of 1,160 meters. After 15 years from its construction, a 48 meter section of the bridge suddenly collapsed. The direct cause of the collapse was the poor welding of the vertical members of the bridge. The bridge was poorly constructed and maintained. 110 out of 111 connections in the bridge were welded poorly, often only penetrating 2 to 8 millimeters, when the beam were 80 millimeter thick. If the vertical members had been welded correctly, the increase in load would have not caused the fatigue stress to exceed reasonable limits. If the bridge had been inspected and basic repairs had been carried out, the collapse would not have happened as well. No flaws were found in the design of the bridge, which indicates that the use of inexperienced contractors, poor management and corruption led to the bridge failure. At the time of the bridge construction, bids for construction projects frequently went to the companies that promised the fastest construction, incentivizing cheap and rushed construction at the expense of safety. The winning bid for the Siangsu bridge construction contract was half the price of its expected cost at the time. 
Maintenance of the bridge was also neglected. During the 15 years from its construction to its collapse, the Siongsu Bridge had never been subject to a detailed inspection because it was less than 20 years old, and inspections only focused on aging structures, which led to corrosion development on the structure over the years. Finally, during the investigation, some bridge damage reports were submitted in February and April of that year to the Seoul government by the contractor responsible for the bridge maintenance indicating that the steel girders supporting the Siongsu bridge were in urgent need of repair and included photographs of the damage on the bridge. Had actions been taken back then, it would have prevented the bridge collapse. Number 5. Hyatt Regency Hotel Walkways On July 17, 1981, in Kansas City, Missouri, the suspended walkways on the second and fourth floor of the Hyatt Regency Hotel collapsed leading to the death of 114 people and injuring more than 200. The collapse was attributed to the design flaws in the walkway support system. The Hyatt Regency Hotel was a multi-story building with a central hall that featured walkways suspended from the 4th and 2nd floor levels. The walkways were supported by a series of steel box girders suspended by hanger rods and retained by nuts and washers. The original design of the walkways used a continuous set of hanger rods for support, spanning all the way from the ceiling to the second floor walkway. However, this design was changed during construction to two sets of rods to simplify construction and reduce cost. A continuous hanger rod meant providing threads for the full length of the hanger rods. Therefore, the change meant that the first set of hanger rods supported the fourth floor walkway and the second set of hanger rods hanging from the fourth floor supported the second floor walkway. Why is this change so significant? Well, the hanger rods are still supporting the same loads at the top. However, the difference is that the bolted connection supporting the fourth floor carries twice as much load now compared to the original design. On the night of July 17, 1981, a dance competition was taking place in the hotel, drawing large crowd onto the suspended walkways. The load on the fourth floor walkway support was significantly increased due to the double load from both the fourth and second floor walkways being supported by a single set of rods. The connection failed causing both the second and fourth floor walkways to collapse. The upper walkway fell onto the lower walkway and both then fell to the ground. Following the collapse, investigation revealed that the design change during construction led to the failure. The engineering firm responsible for the design faced legal consequences. The incident significantly impacted engineering practices emphasizing the importance of thorough review and communication in construction projects. Bridges take different shapes and forms, and the failure of those walkways was one of the deadliest structural collapses in US history. Number 6. Florida International University Pedestrian Bridge on March 15, 2018, the Florida International University Pedestrian Bridge in Miami, Florida collapsed during construction. The bridge collapsed onto a busy road resulting in six fatalities and multiple injuries. The bridge was built in the city of Sweetwater as a safety measure so that students could get to and from the campus without having to cross the busy highway. The conceptual design of the bridge is made out of two spans, the first 53 meters or 175 feet span over the southwest 8th street, while the rest span over the canal. The bridge conceptualizes a cable stay bridge, but the stays do not have any structural function and are made of steel pipes as an architectural feature only. Instead, the structure relies on the truss elements and the stiffness of the deck and canopy. The bridge was constructed using an accelerated bridge construction method, or ABC for short. This approach involved the use of self-supporting structure that was built adjacent to the roadway and then moved into its final position over the road using mobile transporters. The first section had 12 diagonals and vertical members, constructed out of reinforced concrete. Before the first section was moved onto the pier, truss members 2 and 11 were tensioned to counteract the tensile forces at the end of the bridge during transport. Those members were de-stressed when the bridge was on the pier since they are now compressed naturally by the supports. Cracks started to develop on the node of members 11 and 12 before transporting the bridge and further developed after the section was transported on the piers. In response to the cracks, a decision was made to tension member 11 on the day of the collapse. 
At that time, the road was not closed. The bridge collapsed on March 15, just five days after it was placed on the piece. The cause of the collapse was found to be punching shear at the node where the end vertical and diagonal truss members met, members 11 and 12. So how did this happen? The bridge concrete was put in three different sections, which also formed what we know as cold joints which later was found to be a factor in the collapse since it allowed for discontinuity in the concrete. At the time of the collapse, the 53 meter long deck structure had been installed over the main highway, but the back span spanning over the canal, the pylon and the cables had yet to be installed. Therefore, the bridge was placed on shim stacks that did not replicate the final resting position. In the casting yard, there was a full contact support across the deck and its two ends. Yet while resting on the piers, the shims were placed on either side of the central truss, meaning there was no direct support under the truss location, which led to further development of the shear forces. These unexpected stresses and strains in the structure worsened when the end diagonal truss member was de-stressed after being positioned. This increased cracking which should have given warnings that collapse was imminent. Post-collapse calculations showed that the load demand on the node was twice what was designed. A big oversight by the design firm was that it only analyzed the design of the completed structure and not for its various construction phases. The design did not allow for redundancy, which means if any section fell, the whole structure comes down. Number 7. The Tacoma Narrow Bridge On October 7, 1940, the Tacoma Narrow Bridge that connected the city of Tacoma to the Kitsap Peninsula in Washington, USA collapsed after swaying for several hours due to high speed wind. The collapse happened after four months of opening the bridge. The collapse was primarily due to aeroelastic flutter by strong winds. The aeroelastic flutter is a phenomenon in which aerodynamic forces interact with the natural frequencies of a structure, leading to self-excited oscillations. The Tacoma Narrow Bridge had an unconventional design with a relatively narrow and flexible roadway with a length to width ratio that made it susceptible to aerodynamic effects. And you guessed it, the bridge original design did not adequately account for aerodynamic forces and the potential for aeroelastic flutter. On the day of the collapse, the bridge experienced strong winds reaching speeds of around 40 miles per hour the wind blowing perpendicular to the bridge span, creating aerodynamic forces that sets the bridge in motion. The open grid roadway deck allowed wind to pass through reducing wind resistance, but also contributing to the instability. As the wind speed increased, the bridge started to experience vertical and torsional oscillations. These movements became more pronounced as the bridge began to sway visibly. The oscillations reached a critical point when the bridge twisting motion exceeds its structural capacity, leading to the collapse of the bridge central span into the Tacoma Narrow Strait. Failure of the Tacoma Narrow Bridge led to the improvement in the understanding of aerodynamic effects on structures. The solution to this problem is to create bridge decks that is more aerodynamic. Decks that are strengthened with the trusses allow for wind to pass through without creating any uplift forces. Box gutter bridges also reduce the aerodynamic forces and increase the stiffness of the bridge. Number 8 the I-35 Mississippi River Bridge On August 1, 2007, the central span of the I-35 bridge in Minneapolis, Minnesota collapsed during the evening rush hour, taking 111 vehicles with it, resulting in 13 fatalities and numerous injuries. The collapse was attributed to a design flaw, inadequate maintenance and the increase in the weight on the bridge due to the construction activities. Opened in 1967, the I-35 is a truss bridge with a total length of 579 meters or 1900 feet, resting on eight pillars spanning the Mississippi River and carrying eight lanes of traffic. The original design of the bridge included a unique truss configuration. One of the design flaws was the use of gusset plates, which are steel plates that connect truss members at critical points on the bridge. The gusset plates were undersized due to a design flaw. The plates were only half an inch thick, when they should have been twice as much as that. They were also subjected to high stresses, particularly in critical connections. The I-35 have two critical connections, the gusset plate U10E and U10 West. 
Those plates were found to be bending sideways when they were inspected in 2003. However, this was neglected without actions to fix those plates. Over the years, the weight and volume of traffic on the bridge exceeds its design capacity. Additionally, construction activities were on the bridge at the time of the collapse, further increasing the load. The combination of heavy traffic and ongoing construction resulted in an increase in the load on the bridge, increasing the stresses on the already deficient gusset plates, leading to the failure of those connections and a sudden collapse of the bridge. Unfortunately, the inspection of the I-35 bridge back in 2003 failed to identify the critical design flaws and the extent of the deterioration in the gusset plates. The National Transportation Safety Board investigation revealed that the Minnesota Department of Transportation did not effectively evaluate the bridge's structural deficiencies. Number 9. Nenfango Bridge if you started to see that poor inspection and maintenance is a driving cause for bridge failure, then the failure of the Nenfango Bridge is a prominent example of those causes. On October 1, 2019, the Nenfango Arch Bridge in Taiwan collapsed killing 6 people and injuring 12. The bridge was opened in 1998. It was a single tied arch bridge with a length of 140 meters, a width of 50 meters and a clearance of 80 meters for vessels. The bridge had a design life of 50 years, but the bridge did not even reach half that period. Since it's opened in 1998, it has only been inspected once in 2016. During the inspection, it was found that the cables required maintenance from rust. However, three years after the inspection, one cable supporting the deck snapped, triggering a chain reaction, snapping the other cables rapidly, leading to the bridge collapse. When the deck of the bridge gave way, it dragged the arch with it to the river. During the investigation, it was found that the cable corrosion was so severe that only 22-27% to of the functional cross-sectional area was left. The bridge was continuously exposed to seawater and airborne salt, which caused the cables to rust. It also possible that the bridge was further weakened by the recent earthquake as well as the typhoon that hit the area mere hours before the collapse. Either way, negligence was found to be the direct cause of this collapse. Number 10. Mirandi Bridge On August 14, 2018, Mirandi Bridge in Genoa, Italy suddenly gave way, resulting in the loss of 43 lives and significant damage to the surrounding area. The bridge was a cable-stay structure designed by the renowned Italian engineer Riccardo Morandi and completed in 1967. The Morandi bridge had a few distinctive differences from other cable-stay bridges. The bridge had four cables per tower. These cables are made of pre-stressed concrete. For those who don't know what that means, it is a steel that is tensioned prior to the concrete pour, and the tension on the steel is released later which compresses the concrete. This is a very well-known construction technique that is heavily used. Pre-stressed concrete is excellent for beams and bridge girders because the steel in the beam works in tension and the concrete in compression. But in the Mirandi bridge case, the stays purely act in tension. And because concrete is not good in tension, this means that concrete cracks on the stays can develop over time, allowing for water to seep through the cracks, leading to steel corrosion. On top of that, using pre-stressed concrete made it impossible to inspect the condition of the steel inside. On other cable stay bridges, we use a steel cables comprised of individual steel wires of high tensile strength combined to make a huge cable. Those are also tensioned but can be made accessible later for inspection for corrosion and the general condition of the anchors. The Mirandi bridge uses an entirely different approach, a flawed one that requires constant maintenance. The cables were difficult to inspect, and it was unclear how they were coping with increased traffic loads. But during construction, it was considered an innovative design, since Italy had a shortage of steel, and using this design meant a stronger and lighter design, with minimal use of steel, than any other bridge in that time. 
It was even thought during construction that the bridge concrete structure won't need any maintenance. The Morandi Bridge had been the subject of concerns related to structural deteriorations and maintenance for several years leading up to the collapse. Corrosions and deteriorations were particularly evident in the concrete and stays. The design may not have been adequately accounted for long-term effects of environmental conditions. Maintenance practices on the bridge were reportedly insufficient. The structure had been neglected over the years and engineers and experts raised concern about its stability. Antonio Brensic, an engineering professor at the University of Genoa, declared that the Morandi Bridge is a failure of engineering due to its pre-stressed concrete rather than steel construction. He estimated that the cost of constant repairs to the bridge was likely more than the cost of constructing a new and a safer bridge. The collapse was initiated at the stays of P9. This tower and the section of the bridge deck collapse onto the buildings and the river below. Italian engineering experts have heavy suspicions that corrosion to the bridge's steel cables contributed to the collapse, saying that it has decreased the bridge's overall strength by 20%. Nonetheless, this bridge was a fracture critical. If one part fails, then the whole thing comes down. I hope this has been insightful. If so, why not subscribe? Also, there are more videos for you to watch. Cheers.